Hi, Maite, and welcome to the Here Technology CES experience. We're so excited to have you here today. Thank you, thanks for inviting me. Mike, um, it has been one year since you took over as a CEO and so much has changed. So, is there any highlights? Yeah, first off, it's crazy that it's been one year. It's been uh, 14 months and it has been a fantastic year for Here Technologies. Uh, we have managed to stabilize our business. Uh, we have launched a new strategy. We've elevated our experience at CES, so uh, I joke around with the team, I think we spent all of our marketing budget in the first month of the year, but we had a fantastic year from gaining the trust of our shareholders, our board, our customers, and we've really set the foundation for a great couple of years. I have to say, it's visible. You can see the change. Thank you. <laughs> Before we walk around a little bit, I'd love to get your take on any highlights from your research from 2024 on what's happening in the auto sector. Uh, it's interesting, 2024 had two different realities. So you have the reality for the new startups or the disruptive, disruptor OEMs. These OEMs have been investing a lot in computing power, but in AI uh, and bringing AI technologies for their cars, so for the user experience, but also in other parts of the value chain. So uh, manufacturing has been a revolution, uh, digital twins, and a lot of evolution also in algorithms for autonomous driving. Whereas the other reality is for the incumbent OEMs, it has been a very difficult year. Yeah. It was a year of some news, those, some news were quite shocking. And it was a year of realization that they have to do something they're getting behind. Yeah, it's really interesting because I, I think your themes that you just talked about, we're seeing here at CES. We're seeing AI, we're seeing digital twins, we're seeing all those words. And some of the fun stuff is we're not hearing about the metaverse anymore and the big trends from before. So it'll be really interesting in a couple years to see how long this lasts. And then your last point about the auto sector, there are a lot of OEMs that aren't present here this year, which is really interesting. I think uh, two or three of the big American OEMs have very little presence presence here, some of the Germans as well. So it's going to be a very interesting 2025. There's one thing I noticed, geography is changing. We yeah. are seeing some different geographies at CES, so some OEMs from some unexpected places as well. I think that's right, I think that's right. Well, this is great. Would uh, you be okay to take a walk and uh, take a look at our, uh, our booth here? Let's do it. Thank you. I know you're an expert in SDV, but any thoughts on what's going to happen beyond SDV and also any predictions uh, for 2025 and beyond? I know there has been a hype in AI, but I honestly think AI is disrupting our reality and will continue to do so. And one thing I'm seeing at CES is how AI is blurring these barriers we had between different segments. We are seeing a lot of evolution in large language models, but also small language models, agents and orchestrators, then they will be running in the devices and they're becoming smaller and more efficient. So this will be transformational. What they can do when they are in the devices will be transformational. What we're seeing in laptops, what we're seeing in smartphones, what we're seeing in robots, we're going to see in cars as well. So it's not uh, siloed, the, the user experience is not siloed by the device anymore, because the foundational technologies are the same. So we're reaching a stage in which we are thinking about an AI-centric user experience that's focused on the user, not on the device. Yeah. I think that's really, really interesting, and that is definitely a key theme here. You know, our view on SDV is, you know, the car for the first time will have compute power in the car, but it's not just about the devices anymore, it's what is the experience that can be brought forward for that. And from an AI perspective, we're really excited as well because we're going to be using AI to advance our map making capabilities, so in our factory, we're also going to be using AI to automate more and to really focus on getting that live map into the vehicle so that the end user has that great experience. And I think the map is the ultimate example because you are taking information from the ecosystem and everything yeah. needs to be integrated and I think this is what AI is making. So it's, it's phenomenal to see yeah. how we are merging everything into a single AI. Experience. You know, I love what you said because the map is not about navigation anymore. For me, it is a safety feature where everything comes together. You can see what's happening in your environment. You can see status of the vehicle. The user can customize what they want to see. Uh, they can use generative AI to ask questions and get what they need. It's really going to change the experience.
and contextual. This is what the maps help, because AI, it's nothing if you have no context. That's right. If you don't know where the user is and what is nearby, how can you provide a personalized yeah. experience? So the map goes, as you say, way beyond it's just... It's really fun, the because region. here at CES, I think I was uh, being told that five, six, seven years ago, there were companies standing up saying, you don't need a map anymore. <laughs> and now they're realizing that the human needs that context, right? And they, the first thing I look at when I get in the car, when I turn it on, is the map telling me where I'm at and do I then have confidence in the car uh, to use that context. So, uh, so those are great takeaways. Any other big predictions uh, going forward for 25 or beyond? There is something really interesting I'm seeing here. I was looking at the STV predictions forecast for 2025, and I think 2025 is the year the incumbent OEMs will start to make moves. And we have some European OEMs that have some roadmap. We have BMW, for example, launching their Neue yeah. Class platform. Big launch last night. Big yeah. launch. Yeah. But have you seen the Japanese OEMs? It seems like Japan is waking up. Yeah. We saw the government interfering last year and the announcements by Honda, Toyota also is now bringing yeah. computing power to the car. So I think innovation will continue to come from Asia, but there is another country now. That's great, that's right. great. Yeah, and we actually have a great partnership with a Sony Honda Mobility where we are recreating the experience in the cockpit, we brought in a video game maker, actually, Epic Games, to help do that. So I agree with you. I think there are going to be some really exciting things coming from Japan. I absolutely love a fuel. Yeah. What a car. It is an amazing vehicle. <laughs> huh? yeah. You mentioned that you were working with Aphila, but we are here at CES 2025. What else are you showcasing? Is there any announcements that you'd like to bring up? They just opened the door, so the crowds are coming. <laughs> we're trying to keep them from coming in. Um, in a few minutes, the room here will be full, so we're excited about that. But several announcements for us. The biggest announcement was our partnership with uh, AWS, uh, a technology partnership, a 10-year partnership where we are going to be using AWS's advanced tool, tooling in both AI and um, engineering, developer kits, et cetera, to really advance our map making. So we're really excited about that partnership. Um, so that's number one. Um, we have announced you know, what we're doing with BMW, and we just walked over from the BMW, so we're really excited about that. And BMW had a big launch yesterday. Several other customer launches uh, with TOG in Turkey, other OEMs. We've just uh, had a great couple days, and uh, you know we expect the crowds to be big today. Um, this is the first time, actually, we have had in several years vehicles on our platform here. So um, I know we've had a lot of fun. We have the Lotus here that has our HNAV in it that I know we'll see in a minute. You know, kind of a fun story. The Lotus CEO came in yesterday to our booth and said, thank you. I think I've sold more Lotuses uh, today than uh, we have in many, many days. So, <laughs> so, uh, so just a really exciting presence perspective. You know, the real value for us here, though, is the meetings we're having with customers. So we have multiple meeting rooms here. We're scheduled throughout the entire day where we're able to show off what we do, who we are, and our new innovations. In the back corner, we actually have a couple demos of our new innovations, and that's what the customers are really interested in. The Lotus is amazing. I'm looking forward to go there. But one of the questions I have is, you mentioned the meetings uh, that you were having with customers. What do you expect to be here's role in 2025 in automotive? Yeah, so 2025 is a really key year for us because with the pressures the OEMs are seeing, they're finally getting religion around SDV. To me, SDV has been more of a buzzword for the last couple years, and it means simplification in the software stack. And what we've seen is there's too much software in the vehicle, too many integration points, too many points of failure. You know, we've been working with the OEMs to, to help them in simplifying that. So some, of, some OEMs, for example, are buying seven map licenses and having to integrate all that together for the various use cases. They don't need that. They need one version of the truth, one unified map architecture that sits at the foundation of their SDV experience, and that's what we're working with them on. Fantastic, that's what the industry needs. So Maita, thank you so much for joining us here at CES, for doing the walk around here early in the morning with us. Uh, as you can see, the crowds are starting to come in. So uh, why don't we get in the Lotus and check it out? Yes, let's do it. Excellent, you go to the driver's seat. <laughs>